sale. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. We hear it all the time. If you see something, say something. That's what neighbors here in Redford Township did, and thank goodness for them. All right, Mara, plus a wet night across Metro Detroit, and the rain isn't going anywhere as we get closer to the holiday weekend. In fact, it's going to be a wet commute tomorrow morning. And Ben is tracking more showers for the weekend as well. Let's get right to him now with how much rain we can expect over the next 48 hours. In short terms, uh, Sandra and Jason, a lot. And just when we look like we're getting a break, another wave starts to ride in. And this is generally light stuff, but this is going to start to add up especially during Friday morning's commute when we're expecting some of the heaviest stuff. But you can see this connection uh, just ke keeps coming from the Gulf of Mexico as a cold front is just focusing all of this rain and funneling it right into southern portions of Michigan. Uh, because of also the winds this weekend, we're going to have a lakeshore flood advisory get started at 8 a.m. This is for the shoreline in Sandalac and St. Clair counties. Could have some minor flooding and beach erosion there, but for the rest of us, a lot of rain for Friday through Sunday. We're looking at rainfall totals that could top two inches in some spots, so we'll time out the rain and see if we can avoid some of the uh, more trafficked areas of the holiday weekend all coming up in a few minutes, guys. All right, Ben, thanks. Our other top story tonight, they could not believe what they were watching, so they had to call police. Tonight, a 17-year-old is in custody for allegedly sexually assaulting a 3-year-old in Redford Township. Mara McDonald live at the police department tonight. And Mara, this happened where everyone could see. Sandra, this happened in a park in the middle of the day, right in front of people. I can't make this up. Witnesses capturing the police on scene in Lola Park. I was just watching the dude to chill with the little kid. He was pushing him on the swings. I figured that it was his brother. But the behavior became increasingly alarming. At first, witnesses say a 17 year old man was swinging a three year old boy, but then he was actually he was pushing the kid, right? And then every so often he would push the child and then he would let the child fall back and hit him in his groin. It looked wrong. It would get so much worse. A passerby saw both the teenager and the child under the nearby bridge and called police immediately. Then I see the cop pull up and then he draws two people out, his gun drawn, and they both had their pants to their knees. Officer saw the assault in progress. Back here alive. So here is what police are telling us. They say that this 17 year old man has developmental issues of some sort. That's something that witnesses bear out as well. They said there was something that wasn't quite um, standard going on with his behavior, that he had some ticks, that he was making some noises. They it, it was very um, strange to them. They, they knew that something wasn't quite right. In addition, the family is telling us, or actually I should say the family is telling police that they know this teenager, but he is not a family member. We are live in Redford Township tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. Yeah, and Mara, police have already turned the case over to the prosecutor's office or not yet? They have, they have, Sandra. They've turned everything they have over to the prosecutor's office, and I think the operating theory around here is that we can expect some sort of an arraignment likely tomorrow. All right, we'll be following it. Thank you, Mara. 22 months and 448 pages later, the Mueller report has finally been released, at least some of it. A redacted version came out at 11 a.m. today, while the special counsel investigation concluded that neither the president nor anyone in the president's cabinet helped the Russians hack into Democratic emails. The report said several actions by the president were investigated as potentially amounting to obstruction of justice. President Trump turned to Twitter tonight to respond to the Russia investigation, tweeting, quote, anything the Russians did concerning the 2016 election was done while Obama was president. He was told about it and did nothing. Most importantly, the vote was not affected. You can read the entire version of the Mueller report released today on ClickOnDetroit.com. The fiance of a man killed by a rock thrown from an overpass fought back tears today while testifying about life as a single mom. Without him, life is a daily fight. There are some things a boy just needs his dad for that a mom can never give. While I do my best to make Kenneth and my son proud, knowing that justice may not be served is heart-wrenching. 
Kenneth White was killed back in 2017 on I-75 near Flint when a rock thrown by teenagers smashed through the windshield and hit him in the head. His fiance Amy says she struggles as a single parent raising her seven-year-old son. Today's testimony was part of a hearing for four of the defendants. A judge still needs to decide if they'll be sentenced as juveniles as part of a plea deal. A fifth defendant, a 19-year-old, will be sentenced as an adult. We are open for business. That's the message the city of Pontiac is sending tonight as it prepares to grant the first of many licenses for medical marijuana. Jermont Terry is live tonight with the city's plan to welcome pot into Pontiac. Hey, Jermont. Jason, you know most communities, they have been a little hesitant to jump into this pot game, but Pontiac City leaders believe allowing dispensaries to open now is the time that's truly beneficial to the city. The streets of downtown Pontiac are seeing more storefronts popping up, yet there are still plenty of vacant spots. City leaders are hoping allowing green dispensaries to move in will boost the economy. Absolutely, man. Bring more business. Over at Unity Barbershop, Barbara Marco Hogan's welcomes any new business on the block, including medical marijuana shops. I feel like it, it could be a good thing. This week, the city of Pontiac started sifting through applications for those pot businesses. They're going to allow unlimited numbers of the other kinds of industries to come in, such as the growers, the transporters, things like that. But we only will get 20 provisioning centers. And the city's making sure one area doesn't get saturated. Take downtown in the Walton Boulevard area. A maximum of five dispensaries will get the chance to open in each neighborhood. That's what we were concerned about. So we didn't have the lawsuits and the kinds of problems that other cities had to do. Problems like burglars breaking into dispensaries trying to steal the stash. Busting them down and get stuff out of. We got to know how to secure the marijuana situation. The mayor tells me measures are in place to prevent just that. Even deputies are ready. Particularly adding on a few extra patrol units to be able to make sure we can handle the influx and to make sure that they're in safe districts. Now the city hopes that this new business will bring amount, a good amount of money to the city. Money that will go towards road projects and also community projects as well. Reporting live in Pontiac, Jermont Terry, Local 4. Any idea how soon we might see the first one, Jermont? Well, Jason, the city hopes to get all of the applications in and hopefully make some decisions within the next three weeks so we could see the first business opening up here in Pontiac before the end of the summer. All right. Jermont, thanks. A police sergeant in Centerline being credited with saving a young man's life along 696. It happened earlier tonight. A 24-year-old man was on the overpass on Van Dyke, threatening to jump. The first officer on scene joined him right there along the guardrail and eventually talked him down. He basically told me that he had hit rock bottom and there was really nothing worth sticking around for. And I just began telling him that once you hit that rock bottom, there's only way you can go is up. So things will get better from here. We talked for a while, and that's when he decided to, you know, come back from the other side of the gate. That man is now under evaluation at a local hospital. A Detroit gym teacher is off the job after the district found out he had spent the night with students at a hotel. The gym teacher at John Bagley Elementary is on administrative leave with pay right now. The district sent out a robocall today saying parents allowed their children to spend the night with him at a hotel. He's now under investigation for misconduct. Earlier, we spoke with a mother who allowed her child to stay with the teacher. She says he's a family friend and she feels there was no wrongdoing. Something out of a movie is how one person described the chaotic scene on Moross near I-94 on Detroit's east side. We brought you this last night at 11, an armed robbery turned high speed chase that ended with a six car pileup. Tonight we're hearing from the woman who saw it all unfold. What the heck? Like, how is he just jumping out of his car running right now and all of this damage has been done? It looked like a war zone. You know how you crumble up a soda can when you're done? It's like that. The officer that I talked to, he said no one would have survived if somebody had been inside one of those cars. Surprisingly, no one was injured in the crash. All four men involved in the chase were arrested. Work is now underway in Macomb County to prevent a white milky substance from moving downstream in Sterling Heights. The unknown substance was found in the Burr Relief Drain near Mound Road and 18 Mile. Officials say it's making the water look white and chalky. Crews are now installing booms, trying to prevent it from traveling even further as the county investigates the source.
Still to come, there's a new push to stop children from vaping. What's being proposed in Washington that would make it more difficult for teens to buy tobacco products? Plus, also it calls itself America's most haunted house. What was just uncovered behind this historic hotel that even has the employees just a little bit spooked. But first, finding a new path for young adults with autism. And we tend to focus on the can'ts, but what can she do? New help for parents thanks to a single mom whose daughter is facing new autism challenges. Next. Taking your anger out in a rage room tomorrow at 6 a.m. Parents who have a child with autism know it really can be a lifelong struggle. But one local single mom isn't feeling sorry for herself. She's trying to find new opportunities for her daughter and inviting other parents and their kids to join her. I have a family's night. Maria um, Martinez is hosting her first board meeting. A lot of parents, um, they just go with the flow and they just feel like they're alone. But if it sounds more like a support group, well, it's that too. We also need like help. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> we need to unwind. We need to cry. When we Maria's daughter, cry. Bianca, has autism and she and other parents know the struggles. I remember the first time I walked in through the store sobbing, saying I need help. And to have someone tell me it's okay and explain to me what autism is and make me feel comfortable that there's resources out there, I have that in mind when those family goes in. Which is why she now works as that hospital liaison to families finding out for the first time their child will have challenges ahead. I hug them and I let them cry it out and then I tell them it's going to be okay. And I would like for you to have time to work with them. Today, though, she's launched the Just For Me Social Club. The idea is to get kids with autism ready for the rest of their life. Like Bianca, who's now 26. She doesn't get asked to go to a dance. She doesn't get asked to, you know. So I said, okay, I can sit here and cry about it and be frustrated like many moms, or can I do something about it? Because like you said, she, she wants to have a social yes, life. Yes, she wants it. We tend to focus on the can'ts, but what can she do? Dr. Barika Butler is the chief medical officer for the Detroit Wayne Mental Health Authority. She's worked with Maria and Bianca and many other families navigating the challenges of children with autism aging out of the system. We've been able to, with her support coordinators and her providers and therapists, wrap the arms around her and say, Bianca, what can you do? And what do you want to do? And those are two very important questions. Questions many young adults with autism want to answer. It could mean more activities or a job, but most importantly, it means having a life. The young adults with special needs, they're not different than we are. They learn differently. They view life differently, but they're just like us. They have a heart. They feel they have, they're full of life, laughter. They just want to feel that they're a part of a community. The Just For Me Social Club meets once a month at the Ford Resource and Engagement Center in Southwest Detroit. If you're interested in going, give them a call. Looks like a great program. Yeah, it's just getting started, but a lot of energy, a lot of positive energy. I love how she said they're just like us. They yeah. want the same things, right? Yeah. Now here's Hank Winchester with a look at what's coming up tomorrow starting at 5 o'clock. Facebook, it can be a great way to connect with family and friends, but there are big concerns over privacy. In my Help Me Hank report tomorrow starting at 5, I'll show you what you can do right now to make sure your information remains secure. We can just kind of, what, rewind the forecast from the last couple days. It's the same thing over and over. It is. Feels like it. The only thing that's changed is the amount of rain. I mean, yeah. we really have just gotten light stuff and sprinkles for most of the week, and now we're just going to get the buckets out because that rain's going to get serious here over the next couple days. Tomorrow morning, walking out the door, we're probably not going to see our lows until after sunrise. It'll be about 43, 44, and there's really nothing to smile about here tomorrow. It's all going to be clouds and rain, especially for that morning commute. In fact, the heaviest of the rain that we're watching over the next 48 hours is going to come during that morning drive. So keep that in mind uh, for folks who are going to be commuting tomorrow. At least the temperatures were nice today. 70 for most of the east side, 72 in Monroe, even some mid 60s back here in our west and north zone. Contrast that to the temperatures now, which are in the 50s and even 40s. And of course, we're going to fall even farther tomorrow afternoon, not getting anywhere close 
uh, to some of those numbers that we saw today. So we got a little bit of a break in the evening and now here comes that rain again and you look further to the south and there's more of it and it just keeps going all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. That moisture feed continuing to funnel uh, right along a cold front, which just keeps pushing that water here into southern portions of Michigan. So let's look at the timing and this is kind of an academic exercise because there's not a whole lot of breaks here. As you can see, as we go through tomorrow morning, here's that batch of heavy rain that's going to be on top of us for the morning commute. Then as we get into the afternoon hours, surprise, more rain. Uh, that's going to linger in through Friday afternoon and evening. Here's 10 o'clock on Friday. Doesn't look a whole lot different, does it? And then as we get into Saturday morning, you can start to see the direction of this changes as that low sort of pulls away. But it's really not until late Saturday evening that we're going to get an appreciable break. And hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, it looks like we could keep most of Easter Sunday on the dry side. Temperatures tomorrow as we start out in the morning. Uh, again, a lot of these lows are going to come later than what we normally see them. Usually they're pretty close to daybreak, but this could be as late as 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning. 42 in the city, 43 for an official high or low, I should say, in Romulus. South zone lows tomorrow morning are going to be in the mid 40s, so plan on a cool start tomorrow in addition to that rain. We've got the upper 30s there in Genesee County, low 40s down towards Ann Arbor and Michigan Avenue. And the north zone, you're going to be primarily in the 30s to start. And we're not going to rise all that far for high temperatures tomorrow afternoon. 48 is as good as it gets. Morning downpours, and we'll call it scattered showers, but really there's not a whole lot of difference between the rain tomorrow. North winds 15 to 25. There'll be more out of the northeast in our north zone. So that's why that lakeshore flood advisory in effect there for uh, folks who live along Lake Huron. Temperatures rising slowly over the weekend. We get to 52 Saturday with more rain and again a sprinkle can't rule it out on Sunday, but that definitely looks like the drier of the three days. 66 in the afternoon, whole lot of 60s next week. So everything just sort of settles down a little bit, although we still do have rain chances next week. Say this yeah. golf course is better be uber green next month. Can they squeegee those? <laughs> Not <laughs> before be tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks, man. It's a popular hotel that guests swear is haunted. What was found buried on the grounds that goes back 100. But first, new developments tonight in the case of a local mom charged with poisoning her boyfriend's juice. That's next. A Dearborn mom accused of poisoning her boyfriend's drink has been bound over for trial. 21-year-old Ariana Yednock allegedly put Visine inside her boyfriend's orange juice. The boyfriend then unknowingly gave some to their children. Yednock is expected back in court later this month. A house fire earlier this morning on Detroit's southwest side has turned into a homicide investigation. A body was found while fire crews worked to put it out on South Leibold Street near I-75. Fire investigators are working to identify that man's body. State police confirming today a search warrant was issued at the office of the Macomb County Prosecutor Eric Smith. Smith is part of an ongoing investigation involving the spending of money seized during DUIs and drug busts. The investigation expected to be turned over to the Attorney General. America's most haunted hotel just got a little bit spookier after discovering buried human specimens there on the property. They weren't lying. Archaeologists collected 500 bottles on the land once owned by Norman Baker, who used the hotel to treat cancer patients nearly 100 years ago. Bottles contained human tissue, organs, and even tumors that were allegedly removed by Baker. Experts say this discovery will help paint a better picture on Baker's practices. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell now plans to introduce a new bill to raise the nationwide age limit to buy tobacco and vaping products from 18 to 21. Twelve states have already passed laws to raise the age to 21. A survey conducted by the FDA and the CDC in 2018 found nearly 5 million middle and high school students did use some type of tobacco product. Officials blame the rising popularity of e-cigarettes for that increase. The bill is expected to be introduced sometime next month. Well, the father and daughter of, at the center of that viral photo have been identified. Brooke Windsor, who is from Fenton, snapped this picture of the playful dad and his daughter in front of Notre Dame Cathedral. In fact, she snapped it just hours before it went up in flames. Following the devastating fire, Windsor went to Twitter and Instagram in hopes of finding the family in the photo. 
200,000 retweets later, she happily announced the photo has found its way to the dad. The father has asked to remain anonymous, but thanked her for taking such a beautiful photo. Yeah, wow. I get chills every time I see that yeah. picture. Yeah, one of the last ones. Yeah. All right, we've got the Pistons. They're here. <clears throat> They're going to play Saturday night against the Bucks. Could be the last chance, right? <laughs> you go down 3-0, you're pretty well. Bye-bye. Yeah. Uh, so we'll talk about that. Bob Quinn on who he's picking number eight in the draft next Thursday night. And a little bit we call Barking with Barkley. Come on back.